Welcome to the U.S. Kiss Vinyl Reference YouTube channel. Please like and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. All right, folks, welcome back to another episode of the U.S. Kiss Vinyl Reference. Almost stumbled over that. I am Mike Stone, your host, as always. So, uh, you may have noticed a little, uh, little trend lately. You know, we've kind of been on a promotional kick. I've did a series of episodes on the, uh, the promotional LPs and the 12 inch singles. And then we kind of went on a little side quest and talked to, uh, talked to our uh, buddy down in Oklahoma, John Humphrey from Seether. And then we're coming back onto the main road here. And, uh, today we're going to start on promotional 45s and, uh, I am going to guess by looking at my stack, this is going to be about three episodes. Because, yeah, I mean, my original thought was that I was going to uh, do it all in one episode. There's more promotional 45s than what I thought there were. So, uh, I decided to cut it up into a couple of chunks here. So, we'll do a one part, two part, and a three part. Kind of like what we did with the LPs, uh, probably damn near the same, uh, same time period in between each episode. And then, uh, I'm working on some, uh, some other guests. Well, I've, I'm working on one right now, but I've got a few of them in mind. So, uh, I try to try to get them one at a time that way you know I can focus on just one one person instead of sitting there while I'm you know say I'm interviewing John last week or the week before I'm not thinking about the next guy I'm just I'm, I'm focused on John so you know just an example so uh, anyway if you are wanting to learn about promotional 45s, today is your day and the next few days, uh, uh, weekends, you, you know about my schedule. Anyway, so anyway, if you want to learn about promotional 45s, these are going to be your episodes to watch. So go ahead and get your stuff ready and I'll see you here in a couple of minutes or a minute. That'd be a couple for me. So. All right, folks, welcome back. So, the topic for today and the next couple of episodes are going to be 45s, promotional 45s. And uh, I picked me off a small stack here. This is, uh, is going to run from the debut album through Double Platinum. So, you know, there's, there's an idea of how many 45s we're going through promotional copies. But, before we get into 45s, so, um, one of the uh, promotional copy of LP episodes, I had mentioned uh, a Filmworks promo for Rock and Roll Over, and, uh, you know, it, uh, it doesn't make sense that that promo would exist. You know, uh, so it originally came out on the Camel label, and the Camel label ran from like May of 1976 to late April, early May of 1977, right? Rock and Roll Over was released in November of 76. Um, Hoping I got that day right. It's October, November. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was November. Uh, I've got the device right here. I guess I can look it up real quick, huh? Um, 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 um. I actually went through and stored a bunch of these dates in my calendar. That way I can just search it up. And it will tell me. November 11th. Alright. Anyway. 
So Rock and Roll Over was released in November of 76, well within that Camel label time frame. The Filmworks label did not start until May of 1977, late April, early May, somewhere in there, right? So by that time period, you have Love Gun it's about a month and a half away, two months. It's at the end of June. So, a uh, Filmworks copy of Rock and Roll Over, you know, why would they suddenly be promoting Rock and Roll Over when they're fixing to roll out Love Gun? And it, it just doesn't make sense. Well, a friend of mine had talked to me back when this promo was first discovered Tom Daniels, and uh, he had told me that he came across a uh, article online, and uh, I had uh, reached out in a group, and because he he wasn't sure where where he saw the article and and all that, so I had reached out in a group that uh, kind of specializes in magazine ads, and uh, Mark Cicchini had reached out to me and told me, you know, yeah, it's, it's this ad, it's in, uh, this issue of cream magazine and all this. And he sent me a picture of it and, uh, you know, really cool of him to do that. I've, I, I can't express my gratitude enough for him because once I get something in my brain trying to figure something out, it just, it bugs the hell out of me until I, until I see what I'm wanting to see. So anyway, I've had a picture of this ad the whole time and uh, just a few weeks ago in several different collectors groups, I had put out a notice that I was looking for this ad. So, I mean, yeah. by the time Mark sent me this ad was a couple of years ago probably and then I'm getting around to finally looking at it, but looking for it. Anyway, so I, I put out this notice in, in several different collectors groups. Hey, I'm I'm looking for this ad, you know, I'll I'll pay you a little bit for it, you know. And uh a friend of mine named uh, Brian Foster, he reached out to me a week or so after I'd put that notice up. He said, Hey, are you still looking for that ad? I was like, Yeah, yeah, I've I haven't had any leads on it yet, and he said, "Well, hey, I've, I've got a, I've got a copy of the magazine." He goes, "I'll, I'll cut the ad out for you." So we made a deal on it, and he, he sent it my way. So, and I, uh, I wanted it specifically to keep with the uh, FilmWorks promo copy of the album. You know, because I have a feeling that this, this ad has something to do with it. So, this is out of the January 1977 issue of Cream Magazine. And, uh, basically, it's a subscription drive. And I'll, I'll throw the ad up here. But just reading off of it, it, uh, I'm not going to read the whole side of it, but basically it's saying for every year's subscription that you buy for cream magazine with sending this coupon in they'll send you a free copy of rock and roll over so now the january 1977 issue this would have come out at least a month beforehand so we're talking december of 1976 and the uh the subscription drive lasts until February 1st of 1977. So, you know, magazines run used to run a little slow back then. They probably still do now. I don't really buy magazines anymore. But anyway, so you start doing math in your head. Okay, <clears throat> this ends in February of 1977. By the time they round those names up and send it into Casablanca and Casablanca you know they either they they send it on to the pressing plants you know hey we need 
this many free copies printed up. Can you help us out and get everything gets starts going down the pressing line? I don't know why I can't damn fucking talk today. But anyway, by the time all that gets turned around, it's not a stretch to think that it went from February, March, April, and into May. We're in the Filmworks label period now. So I think that this ad right here has a lot to do with the existence of this promotional copy right here on a Filmworks label. And uh, I ain't going to take it out of the sleeve. I'll just throw the throw it up there. But, you know, look over to the right-hand side and it says not for sale. So... I, I do think that that ad and that record have some kind of uh, symbiotic relationship if I can get all scientifical and shit. So, But anyway, many, many, many thanks to Brian for that, Brian Foster. He, uh, he and I have been friends for several years now, and uh, he's been active in the groups for several years. Uh, on my Facebook page, he's been he's been a top fan for a while. You know, I I've posted a uh, a meme there for a little bit when I get the notice of who my top fans are that week. And anybody that knows me knows that I'm kind of an old wrestling fan. You know, the Attitude Area era of the WWF, WWE, what do you, whatever you want to call it. So, for those of you who haven't seen it, there, uh, if you're familiar with the Attitude Area, there was a group called Degeneration X. You had Triple H, you had Shawn Michaels, the New Age Outlaws, China, and all this. And, you know, they kind of started the whole crotch chop thing. But, uh, anyway, so the meme is Triple H is standing in the center of the ring. On the right hand side, you got China crotch chopping on Triple H. On the left hand side, you got Shawn Michaels crotch chopping on him. And yeah, so the meme is that Triple H is the top fan, and China on the right side is Mike, as I put it in the meme. And then Shawn Michaels on the left hand side is also Mike, but left handed, as I put in the meme. You know, it's. Just a funny little thing that I came up with to kind of, kind of give the top fans a little salute. So, anyway, Brian has been in that for has been my top fan for a bit. Him and a, another fella. So anyway, he he sent me sent me that ad, and I can't thank him enough for it. And I'll be damned if he doesn't have me thinking about going down a rabbit hole of finding other ads. And putting them with promotional copies now so you know it happens it happens I mean there was a there was a time where I said I won't touch these with a 10 foot pole and I've got I don't know somewhere between 250 and 300 of them now so you know, just another rabbit hole I guess so anyway on to the 45s and I'm going to pause it real quick because, yeah, I've got a little, little hiccup bunch here. All right, I'm back. I had to get a few, few little air bubbles out of my chest. So, as we covered in the, uh, in the LP episodes, a promotional copy is basically a copy handed out for free. No royalties paid. Um, just handed out to people to promote the record as, as it implies. Uh, 45s were given to a lot of radio stations, so they would, uh, they would want to push a single or something like that, print up a promotional copy, send it to radio stations all over the place, and, I mean, you get the gist of it. So, uh, they would usually send these, it, like the first single off an album, they would send it out maybe just a little bit before the album comes out, but, you know, anyway, so 
we're going to start from the uh, the very beginning. And the first promotional 45 we have is nothing to lose. And this comes in a white sleeve, and it's on a blue label, number one, if you're keeping track. Uh, now, this is the blue label that has the Warner Brothers mentioned on the bottom. So we have a mono side, and then we have a stereo side. Because there was still, you know, AM radio was still kind of a thing back then, so the mono side was usually played on AM stations and stereo was on FM. And, uh, yeah, that's the first single. Usually, in Kiss's case, I can't speak for, like, every band, but usually in Kiss's case, it's just the same song. You know, you'll have a mono on one side and a stereo on the other, and then when they finally ditch the mono side altogether, most of the time it was just the same song on both sides. So, so there's nothing to lose. All right, next up, so there was the whole kissing contest thing, and the band was convinced to record a song called Kissing Time, and the band did not want it added to the album. They said, just release it as a single and, and call it a day. Well, we know it eventually got added to the album, but it was released as a single, and here's the promotional copy for it, and it's, again, like nothing to lose. It's on the blue label with a Warner Brothers address, or mention. And we have a, a mono side. And then we have a stereo side. And, like I said, they didn't want it added to the album, but it did. And uh, also, white sleeve on this one. Back in there. Okay, and then up next, they decided to push Strutter. And again, we have a white sleeve. It's on that same blue label. There's our mono side. And there is stereo. So all three of these have had, you know, the promotion not for sale text on them, like right at the, right underneath the red line that runs across here. So these 45s are all marked on the label that they're promotional copies aside from the fact that they're mono stereo and from the first album it seemed like strutter was the hardest one for me to get my hands on and there's still a a, a retail copy that that i'm i'm still in in need of for strutter so it seems like that one seems to be a, a bit tougher than the others so all right so now we move on to hotter than hell and there was only one single released off of hotter than hell and it was let me go rock and roll and uh, the retail copy was back with hotter than hell and we all know the story you know the blue label retail copy is next to impossible to find so well I mean next to it pretty much is impossible but the promotional copy is a bit easier to find uh, quite a bit easier to find so it's on a blue label number two and so it no longer has a Warner Brothers mention at the bottom of the label so 
there's your mono side and if you look on the left hand side there right above the let me go rock and roll title you'll see it says not for sale and there's the stereo side like I said this is a lot easier to find than the uh, than the stock copy if we're being honest I I doubt I ever hold a stock copy in my hand so I would love to find one but we uh, we know what the last one sold for and I just I can't see myself paying that so I don't know all right Moving on to the Dress to Kill album. The first single was Rock and Roll All Night. And it was backed with Getaway, with the promotional copy. It's on a blue label too. It's just a, uh, a mono stereo copy. See underneath Bogart there, it says promotion copy not for sale. And there's the stereo side. So this is not the version that that broke out pretty big. So it was just another single. And then continuing from the Dress to Kill album. They released the second single, Come On and Love Me. Again, still in the white sleeves. This was also on a blue label number two with no mention of Warner. So there's your mono side. And uh, if you look up in the palm trees there, you can see in silver text it says promotion not for sale. And there's the stereo side. So yeah, that that promotional text can can be hidden a little bit from time to time. And now we're getting into the Alive album. And uh we're fixing to uh, introduce a slightly different format. So, so on a live, there was a live version of Rock and Roll All Night that was released as a single. And everything I've showed up to this point has been mono stereo. So we're still on a blue label number two. And... This one, this side here, if you look underneath the Rock and Roll All Night title, you'll see it says from the Casablanca LP, Alive, and it's stereo, and the promotional text is up in the palm trees. If you flip it over, you got promotional text in the palm trees again. If you look below the title, it says from the Casablanca LP, Dress to Kill. So this has, this is a promotional copy that has a, a B-side. So that's just a, a, a slightly different format from what we've been seeing for the first few 45s. And then... We have a variation on that live version of Rock and Roll All Night. So it's still in a white sleeve. But now we have a mono stereo. So it's hard to see, but the promotional text is in Bogart's jacket there. It says promotion copy not for sale. Over on the right side underneath the palm trees, you see it says mono. And then here's the stereo side. 
So there's a uh, a variation on that 45. get into the destroyer era and we also get what is known as a company sleeve so this says the Casablanca branding on it and we call this a camel sleeve because from all the way across it's camels so camel sleeve so the first single off a of destroyer was shouted out loud and uh, so this one is on what we call a blue label three it now has a sunset boulevard address at the bottom which the sunset boulevard address on the label corresponds with the address on this company sleeve here so this is a mono stereo and what I want you to pay special attention to is on the left side above the title shout it out loud it says LP version cold ending which a cold ending as we know is a hard stop and I mean it, it's the version off the record it's not a single mix which there are many many mixes that are just mixes and edits that are just for these singles and we have a stereo side to that that also mentions that cold ending this is one of the rarest 45s that I own uh, you just you don't see that many of these I have a slight case of OCD I I like my records in there a certain way and I just put that one in backwards from what I normally do so that would have drove me crazy later later Another variation of Shout It Out Loud. Again, in the camel sleeve. And before I get started, that LP version of Shout It Out Loud, it has a running time on the label of 2 minutes and 50 seconds. Alright? So, this promotional copy. See, it's a. Uh, mono stereo it uh it has a running time of two minutes and 38 seconds and it mentions nothing about the LP version or a cold ending this is a single mix and it, it fades out towards the end and then there's your stereo side so that was the first single off of destroyer next single off of Destroyer was Flaming Youth and mine is in a camel sleeve um, before I well I'll go ahead and show the label so we're on a camel label now you know it says promotion and not for sale there here's your mono side and then your stereo side so uh, while I'm putting this up, so for a long time I was a firm believer that uh, if we if a uh, single came with a uh, pitcher sleeve, the promotional copy didn't, which we all know Flaming Youth came with a pitcher sleeve. I was a firm believer in that for many many years, and uh, 
we were discussing it in one of the groups here a while back and uh, a friend of mine named Ron Whitmore had mentioned that he had a promo copy of Flame and Youth with a pitcher sleeve and uh, he said that the the label on the 45 and the pitcher sleeve they either like both had the call letters wrote on them or they had they both had the same rubber stamp like a date I, I don't remember exactly how he said but they they had matching marks so that kind of turned my opinion around on whether or not I think that a promo copy came in a pitcher sleeve and my reason for n not believing that they came with pitcher sleeves was these things were handed out for free but they still costed money to make so you know if they had a uh, a budget that you know we're only going to spend this amount of money on promoting this single for them and say those pitcher sleeves are you know just another a, a dime a piece or something to have printed up and, and from here i'm just pulling numbers out of my ass don't don't hang on any of these but uh you know, say the pitcher sleeve itself costs a dime to print up, and you know, say the the label wants to press up a thousand promotional copies. Well, that's that's a hundred dollars of an added expense to that to their budget. You know, so to me, it didn't make sense to uh, to print up pitcher sleeves. And then also, you know, the pitcher sleeves don't, don't have the look hole right here. So it's just a solid sleeve and, you know, some of them will have like the B-side track on the back when there isn't a B-side on the 45 and it just, it didn't seem logical to me. But when Ron showed me the, uh, the label and the pitcher sleeve having those matching marks from the radio station, that that fought my opinion around to where I believe that these did come in pitcher sleeves and now I need to uh now I need to find a few pitcher sleeves so but uh yeah Flaming Youth was the first 45 to have a pitcher sleeve so all right next up is Detroit Rock City so here we go it's on a camel label. It says promotion, not for sale. And on the flip side, you have Beth. And then, you know, I'm going to clearly put it up there. Over on the right hand side, it says that Detroit Rock City is the A side. And now the story goes that. DJs started flipping the single over and playing Beth and it just kept getting requested and requested and requested. Me personally, I think that is a hyped up story because for the most part up to this point, those 45s have had the same song. It's been a mono stereo other than that one weird rock and roll all night. And it just didn't make sense to me that, you know, all of these singles being mono stereo, all of a sudden they release one that actually has a B-side and, you know, the DJ starts flipping it over. I think that story was hyped up to push Beth, which leads us into our next single. So now we have Beth on the camel label, and if you look up there to the right, it shows Beth being side A. And then on the back side is Detroit Rock City. So I just, I don't buy the whole story that radio stations just randomly flipped a single over and, you know, made a huge hit for them. I, I think that was kind of a calculated move and just a, a nice little story to kind of hype the single up a little bit. That's just my personal opinion, though. I wasn't there. 
And then we have another Beth. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this came in either an army kit or a, a destroyer press kit. So this is a mono stereo version of Beth. So there's your mono side. It says promotion not for sale. And there's your stereo side. Um, uh, yeah, I, I believe it came with one of those two kits. I don't remember which. I'm, I'm leaning towards the army kit. But, uh, yeah, Beth got a uh, mono stereo version along with a version that has a B-side. There has not been a, uh, a mono stereo version of Detroit Rock City, so... All right, now we are going on to the Rock and Roll Over album. The first single off of that, still in a camel sleeve, was Hard Luck Woman. So Hard Luck Woman was on a camel label. There's that promotion not for sale text. And then there's your stereo side. Then the next single was Calling Dr. Love. Again, on the camel sleeve. And the camel label says promotion, not for sale. There's your mono side. And there's your stereo side. did it for the Rock and Roll Over album. Now we're getting into the Love Gun period. The first single off of Love Gun was Christine 16. So now we have what's called a Filmworks label. It says record and Filmworks at the top underneath Casablanca. And then I'm going to train your eyes over to the right hand side look at the running time at the very bottom of that column of text it says two minutes and 52 seconds all right so there's your mono side and then there's your stereo side have a variation of Christine 16 and I forgot to note on the the other Christine single now the the company sleeve it starts off with camera or camels and it morphs into cameras here by the time it gets to the other side so but here's the uh, other variation of Christine it's also a mono stereo so now, look over to the right hand side. You see the running time is three minutes and 10 seconds. All right, there's your mono side. And there is your stereo side. And that 310 promo quite tough to find. I, you can find the 252 promo pretty much any day of the week, but that 310 promo is, is rough. Alright, 
Next up is Love Gun. So, still on a Filmworks label. It says promotional copy not for sale up there on the right. There's your mono side. And there's your stereo side. No variations for Love Gun for some reason. Now we are getting to the Alive 2 album. And the first single that was released off of it was the live version of Shout It Out Loud. So we're in a film work sleeve. We'll be, we'll be in the film work sleeve for a while. So here's your mono side. And then look up to the right hand side. It says promotion copy not for sale. All right. And then there's your stereo side to that. Alright, so there is a variation to that live single. Uh, Filmworks sleeve again and a Filmworks label so it's a mono stereo also and now if you look up to the right side it says promotional copy not for sale there's your mono side and there's your stereo side got another single from Alive 2. And this one is Rocket Ride again in the Filmworks sleeve and on a Filmworks label. So here's your mono side. Notice the promotional text on the upper right and your stereo side. right out of my hand and onto the carpet. Alright. Now we are moving on to double platinum and this will be the, the last 45s that I show today, so there's only one single released off of Double Platinum, and that was Strutter 78. So here we have a mono stereo, and see up on the upper right, there's the promotional text, and then underneath the title, you know, the, the fourth line down, it says, you know, it's got a P with a circle on it and then 1978. So, pay attention to that. Here's the stereo side of that. variation to it. So we're still in a film work sleeve there. 
still says promotional copy not for sale up on the right but if you go down underneath the title now there's a P with a circle and a C with a circle and it says 1978 Casablanca so that's that's the variation there so that was the mono side wait no there's the mono side and then there's stereo side so that does the first installment of of the 45s the promotional 45s and uh, I'm gonna try to try to get these episodes banged out in a single weekend and have them ready to, to go on their respective drop days so yeah, I uh, had a little bit of a hectic week at work, and I didn't didn't get time to, to film an episode, edit it, and all that. So here I am on a Saturday, just a, a smidge past noon, recording it, and I'm going to try to get it edited together and released either either this evening or or sunday morning one of the two so uh i do apologize for that but uh, unfortunately i don't have a uh, large enough following on youtube to pay the bills with so i gotta slug it out in the factory so it is what it is but anyway i thank you for hanging in there on this first installment and uh i will see you on the next episode